Hi guys, okay, so let's compare the 750Ti to the R7-260X. Uh, I should say, if you actually want to know details about these cards, you can watch my previous videos on each of these. If you click this link here, or this link right here, if I've added them in yet. Anyway, so let's talk about a few of the similarities between these and why I'm comparing these particular two cards. Well, these particular two cards, because these are the ones that I happen to get, or happen to have got myself. Okay, so firstly starting with the price, this one right here is about £120 at the time of making this video, it's £190.99, you know what I mean. And this one here is about £110, that you can get other 260Xs with 2GB of GDDR5 memory for around the £100 mark. So oh, this, it's a general trend that AMD's cards tend to be a little bit cheaper than NVIDIA's because NVIDIA just like to charge whatever, whatever they like, so... Yeah, uh, both these cards come pre-overclocked, and they have very similar clocks actually. So it's 1163 megahertz for this one, and 1160 for the 260X. Uh, they both have two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, as I said before. However, the clocks are very different. Whereas this one, the 750Ti, is only at 5400 megahertz effective of the memory on the memory, and this one here is 6600 megahertz. On the memory, so that and that is quite a difference. So when we look at the first stock benchmarks, yeah, we'll see what effect that has. Both of these are on a 128-bit bus as well, and the CUDA cores to stream processors is 640 for the Nvidia card and 896 for the AMD card. Though obviously they're just numbers; they don't, they can't be compared one on one. So I just thought I'd put that in anyway. Okay, so all the benchmarks were done with my i7-4770K at stock with 16GB of G-Skill Trident X memory at 2400MHz. I've used the latest drivers for both of these cards. I can't remember what the NVIDIA ones were, but the AMD ones are 14.2 Catalyst 14.2 beta drivers. So, yep, but they were released with Thief, so a couple of days ago from the time that this video was made. Uh, I should say that for Battlefield 4, I used Mantle to test the AMD card and DirectX to, to test the NVIDIA card. And people will be like, oh, but that's not fair, blah, blah, blah. But if you buy this card, this one here, you're going to run it with Mantle. You're not going to run it with DirectX just because, oh, well, if I had an NVIDIA card, I'd run it with DirectX. So no, yeah, I've done that. So you don't like it, whatever. <laughs> uh, I would have included Thief in the benchmarks, but at the very last minute... Uh, IDOS Montreal, or whoever it is who's dealing with the optimization of the game itself, not the drivers, have decided, oh, Mantle support isn't quite ready yet. So I've done the test with the NVIDIA one. I can say that this one, when it's overclocked, the 750 Ti, when it is overclocked, can do run the Thief built-in benchmark at 30 frames per second. So, yeah, there we go. But I can't say what it's going to be like on Mantle. You run this now on DirectX, and it's zero optimization for DirectX because they know they've got Mantle support, so their drivers are not optimized for it at all. They like my 280X, for instance, was about two frames per second better than the 750Ti, and that cost twice as much. So, yeah. There were some surprises in the benchmarks. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But first, let's have a look at the stock benchmarks. Okay, so there we go, that was the benchmarks at just stock speeds. I should say that I do think that the fact that the memory for the 750Ti is so underclocked compared, I mean, what, it's about 1200 megahertz 
faster this one on its memory and that, that's a lot that's a big difference and I think a lot of the time especially ones that you need faster memory that are going to have big texture packs and things like that you really it's really going to pay dividends to have the 260x at stock at least so yeah I think that's why on certain parts there that this one was quite low I mean grid 2 noticeably I mean I had to re I redid that test because I was like why is it so low and I do think it's because the memory is clocked so low because once it's overclocked it's not like that at all and it shoots up hugely so at stock basically of the six things I tested we're three on three so they are pretty even at the moment okay so as for the overclocking now if you watched my last video you will have seen this one run overclocked 1324 megahertz which is the max that MSI Afterburner can go up to versus this one could only get to 1220 megahertz so there is a bit of a difference on the GPU clock there but however the memory I could get this one to 6500 megahertz so that's 1100 megahertz faster than it was before and this one got up to 7000 megahertz so yeah that's pretty good and it does it'll kind of even it out a little bit though but we'll see in the overclock benchmarks in a second. I should say the R7 260X had had quite a few problems when it was overclocking. I mean, we're not just talking about artifacting and things like that, but random crashes, like I kept lowering the clock, lowering the clock, and then it would run some games and other ones would crash. And then halfway through Battlefield 4, the audio just went, just went and started going really buzzy and horrible for no reason. Restarted and that fixed that, but yeah, I, this I did have a lot of problems overclocking this. So, and whereas the the 750Ti was a bit of a dream, really, which is actually not really normal for me to be perfectly honest. It's not really normal. Uh, okay, so here are the overclock benchmarks. I should say I've thrown in a couple of synthetic benchmarks. I don't tend to do synthetics much because they don't really matter. So there we go. Anyway, here are the overclock benchmarks. Okay, so there we go, that was the overclock benchmarks, and as we see now, the uh, 750 Ti with the overclocking is now 5 in to 1 in its favour. So the overclocking has worked a lot better with this, though again, as I've said before, I do think this card is a pretty special one, and not like, probably a little bit higher than the typical that you might get. Uh, the temps and fan speeds, this was 32% on the fan speed and it reached a maximum of 51 degrees so that's still pretty cool uh, as for this one the 260x it was a 39% fan speed and it actually got up to 65 degrees so and while it does seem hot in comparison I should say that a, a card like the 290x with a stock cooler on it runs at like 105 degrees so we're a long way off what you call extreme temperatures Okay, so the advantages of the R7 260X are, frankly, mantle support when it eventually comes out properly. I mean, we've got Battlefield 4, but as you saw, it didn't really make that much difference in that game. Uh, you have true audio support, which Thief will support once it's actually, like, people have decided, yes, well, now you can use it after release, yeah. Another advantage is it actually has a display port included so you can run more monitors off this card than the 750Ti which can only run up to two monitors at the same time. What else have we got? Uh, the two set, the 260X is also significantly cheap. well, depends what you mean by significantly cheaper, but you can get this for around £100, not one of these, but another 260X, 2 gigabytes of GDDR5, you can get it for around £100, whereas this one is, I bought it for £125, you can get it for £120 now. But yeah, there is that little bit of a price bump between these two. So I would say it's a plus point when the performance at stock is quite similar. Uh, also, the 260X, not only is the performance good out of the box without doing any overclocking yourself, it also supports Crossfire. So you could, in the future, put another one there and run them together, which is something that 
the 750 Ti doesn't support. So the disadvantages of the R7 260XR that it has slightly higher power consumption. Now this is because it's not made on the newest technology like the Nvidia is on the Maxwell architecture and it, the power consumption is insanely low but when comparing them directly it does have higher power consumption by about 25 watts so a kind of this size card is not that it's pretty negligible but it's something to bear in mind if that's something that's very important to you. The temperatures are higher with this one as well. It's, like I said, 65 degrees isn't actually really that high. I, it's just that the 750Ti has a like a beast of a cooler on it for something of that size. Also, the overclocking on the 260X it isn't as stable and it isn't as effective as you saw. It only added on a few frames per second, whereas this one added on about five or six. So that's something to bear in mind if you plan on overclocking. I think the binning process with the 750Ti overclocked edition was slightly better than the one used for the 260X. So, Okay, so let's talk about the 750Ti. The advantages of this are it's low power consumption, only 60 watts, 75 watts absolute maximum. Low temperatures, so 51 degrees absolute maximum. Uh, there is actually, and as a result of that and as a result of the cooler, it's actually got quite low noise. Uh, to my ears anyway. I mean, it's interesting. I looked on uh, eBuy recently. There's someone's left a review for it saying that the fan's quite noisy, but honestly, I don't know what card they were using. Honestly, why do people why do people get to write reviews like this? And that's a rant for another day. Also, the performance is very stable for this card, which is like a really, really good, th good thing. Literally no trouble. I ran all the benchmarks for all the games. No crashes, no artifacting, no stuttering, nothing. Absolute dream. Of course, the overclocking potential of this is very good. You saw the difference between the stock and the overclocking one in the last video, and also you see it again here. And the final thing, and this is completely subjective, uh, I think this card looks pretty damn nice. As for the bad points for the 750Ti, no SLI support, so you can have one, that's all. You can't have another one. Uh, there's no display port, so you can't actually use G-Sync yet until it's supported over DVI or something like that. The memory at stock is bizarrely underclocked but it doesn't matter if you if you want to overclock it it will easily overclock even in, not even just with this sample it will overclock if you've got one like this and the final disadvantage I can think of of this card is that it is quite bulky so if you want need a really small form factor card then maybe this isn't the exact one to go for so really I can't say factually which one you should go for it does depend on what you are looking for in a graphics card I would say with my own personal opinion, personal to me only, I would go for the 750Ti because it's my experience with it, it was much easier to use, it didn't crash or anything on me, and it looks pretty good, doesn't it guys? It looks pretty good. That is of course not to say the 260X isn't a very good card, it is very good indeed, and both of these are easily worth your money if you're looking for a card in this range. But anyway, what I really want to know is which one of these do you like best? If given the choice, you have to have one or the other, which one would you choose and why? If you let me know that in the comments, I would be very interested to know. If you keep it polite-ish, uh, not, it's not worth me saying that, is it? Yeah, but yeah, so NVIDIA, AMD, which side are you on? Okay, so thank you guys for watching, liking, sharing, subscribing and all that stuff. Just thank you very much. It is absolutely really appreciated. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to hide under here now.